Welcome back. So a few weeks ago, I started getting these tweets at the hashtag HeyDan from people who were furious about a nonprofit named SnackBlock. They got $145,000 in CARES Act funding. OHA handed out millions in health equity grants back in September. So I was curious and I looked up SnackBlock on Facebook and Instagram and found holiday drives and free COVID safety training. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, they offered free massages for black and indigenous people of color, which sounds pretty charitable to me. They've been handing out food and supplies to fire victims, too. So, frankly, I really didn't see what the big deal was. It certainly didn't vibe with the tweets that I was getting, like this one from Fizzy Perp. He said, it looks like Oregon gave money directly to BLM Antifa militants. Does that seem newsworthy to you? His tweet linked me to a blog that linked me to SnackBlock's Twitter account, which quickly explained why the people who were tweeting me were so concerned. SnackBlock, the same group that the state handed 145,000 public dollars to, tweeted this on August 11th. Just a friendly reminder that all cops are bastards. And this on August 25th. Portland, where the food is locally sourced, but the pigs are imported. They posted a graffiti appreciation thread asking people to share their favorite graffiti downtown and supported looting by analogizing it with European expansion in the 19th century, saying, new rule, anyone who condemns looting has to give their land back to the appropriate indigenous nation. And when I looked more thoroughly through the Instagram page, among the posts about charity work, there was this video outside the now infamous Red House. This is how you feed your family by taking away the home of somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Your children hate you. Every single one of your children. Oh, and they're going to hate you when they grow up. So much more. Your wives you. can't wait for you to die. The video lasts about an hour. And while we can't identify, of course, who is speaking in the background, this is the type of content shared on SnackBlock's page under the title, Please Come in Support of the Red House. At one point, a man describes Molotov cocktails to an officer, saying it's almost cocktail season. Just take a bottle, some gasoline, and some styrofoam, right? And then when it gets on you and it's burning your flesh, you can't put it out. It just won't go out. I reached out to SnackBlock to ask about all this on Facebook and Instagram. I emailed them and I got nothing. So I requested their grant application where I finally found a phone number for Jenna Golden who told me no comment and that they don't want us telling their story. But I found this one in Willamette Week from September, right around the time when they got that grant money. This piece focused on a locally viral video SnackBlock made about white supremacy featuring its president, Mason Wade. Are you tired of white supremacy? Welcome to the club. We've been holding your spot for hundreds of years. Call 1-800-BURN-IT-DOWN. Resources for the revolution. The reporter, Shannon Gormley, then interviewed Wade about the message. It's, it's for 1-800-BURN-IT-DOWN. Uh, um, and in like City Hall and a lot of like local newspapers, um, a lot of, I feel like it's only people quoted saying things like, burn it down is not the way to go. Uh, saying things like that is not the way to go. But you obviously don't believe that. Um, so what do you mean? By well, I also, I don't believe in putting property over people. You know, buildings can be rebuilt, um, but lives can't, lives can't. Once it's gone, it's gone. And I think even to this day that we're still having this conversation of, but, 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 but the looting, you know, I'm like, no, lives are being lost. How are we equating? But then once again, this is a huge problem within America is that we put profit over human life. So I'm not necessarily saying like, oh, burn down the whole place, but we're talking about burning down the system. We're talking about, you know, taking it, dismantling it and building it in everybody's likeness because, this, the system's working the way it's supposed to. It's not meant for us, <laughs> you know? It's meant for, you know, the status quo and that's it. And so that's what I meant by that. Now, I asked the state if they knew about SnackBlock's Twitter account before awarding the money, and they said no. And quote, our review process was rigorous, but given the number of applicants, it was not possible to review all the social media accounts of every organization. You'll notice that they actually didn't give me an in-person interview either because for some reason, nobody really wants to talk about this topic. But let me tell you why it's so important to have a conversation instead of a press release or a no comment. I asked, if OHA was not aware of the account, what is the reaction now? Safety and violence prevention were key factors in the assessment process, and some people may view those tweets as antagonistic. To which the state replied, OHA is working to achieve health equity for all people in Oregon. Health equity is when all people can reach their full health potential and well-being and are not disadvantaged by their race, ethnicity, 
language, disability, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, social class, intersections among these communities or identities, or other socially determined circumstances, to which my natural follow-up question would have been, what? Huh? What, what does that even mean? Snack Block was founded in 2017 as a support tent that handed out food and snacks to protesters. Then it formally became a nonprofit in June of this year as protests surged in Portland. The 5013C is so new at this point, they don't have, actually have any substantial public filings to evaluate. Though through the grant process, they are required to report all their expenditures. And OHA said they submitted their November report and it was reviewed with no concerns. And if you look at social media, you can see that SnackBlock has been doing a lot to help people. And they've been doing no tweeting, not for about three months now. So this isn't a report about SnackBlock being good or bad or anything, really. Anything except accountable. And the state, too. Because this money didn't come from a GoFundMe account. We say something pretty regularly on this show, that words matter. And, you know, when they're attached to public money, sometimes they deserve some explaining. Unfortunately, I can't really give you that context here tonight. But... I can't provide you with some irony, maybe. You know, the people on Twitter who first told me about this story, uh, Fizzy Perp and others, well, they must have expected me to have this report done the very next night. And as you can see, it takes a little longer than that. And when it didn't air right away, man, they swarmed me on Twitter on the hashtag HeyDan. They called me names. They insulted me with memes. They edited my likeness into very graphic scenes. And that comes with a job. I get it, though. I did report the ones that used pictures of my wife and kids. Friends of ours didn't like this at all. Our family got pretty mad. They told me, don't do this story, block them on Twitter. But I reminded them that sometimes when people think they're being ignored or that others just aren't listening, they'll say whatever it takes to get your attention, even if in this case it's laced in irony. That said, those Twitter trolls didn't get 150 k from our state. And in a time when calls for transparency and accountability have been impassioned cries from our streets, you should be expected to play by the same rules if you want to be funded from the same pot.